Josh Hauge is. It leads to a lot of roster turnover. There were some veterans on this union team from a season ago, some of which did choose to use their fifth year in other locations. But then you have players who were not seniors who chose to leave the roster for one reason or another. So a very young group and a group that also missed a year, much like the engineers due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So a lot of changes. It's brought ahead by Mel from the defensive line. Here is Theodore, a pass looking for a trailer. Didn't connect, and now the engineers will take it the other way with speed. Led ahead by Gagneau. He walks in and tries to pass, a, uh, pass it middle. It ended up deflecting off of a diving defender. That's where Murphy's able to hang on. And the first of the many pleasantries you'll have to expect exchanged in front of Murphy's net. 12.48 remaining here in period one. Still no score. The engineers of RPI, the Dutchman of Union College. In these blackout games, the engineers five and four against Union, so hasn't always been that way. Tradition that started back in 2003. They have played their last seven matchups against the Dutchman. And when you look at RPI versus Union to begin the regular season, for a Capital Region sports fan, there's really very few ways you could think of starting a season better than that. Evans tried to send it on net. That one gets blocked. Sent all the way down. This one will miss the net of Jack Watson wide. And that's where Mason Clee will win the race. That'll go for an icing. The Dutchman last weekend, well, they put up a fight at the very beginning. It was Bram Shearer scoring to tie game one at one apiece about midway through the first period, but it was all Minutemen after that. Josh Howge saying in interviews in subsequent days that the Minutemen are one of the harder teams to play against, the tougher teams, the heavier teams was the word that he liked to use. And when you have a younger group like we were mentioning, it just it changes the way that the way that you play against those kind of teams. So a challenge, a learning experience, I'm sure. And now the Dutchmen look to shake that one off. And a good learning experience leads into the first DCAC hockey weekend. Sent to the point, ripped on goal, saved by Watson. Prokop got the shot away. Jack Watson able to hang on to that one, so he'll take a face off in his own end. Again, if you're just joining us, we are experiencing some technical difficulties here in the broadcast booth as we're looking to catch up with the coach, Dan Fridgen, who joins me on these RPI broadcasts. He's in the building, and if you couldn't tell by the line of people looking for his autograph before the game, he is indeed here. So we hope to hear from him very soon. Meanwhile, the face off to the right of Jack Watson. Ready to go on the draw. A stalemate leads to possession for Herman for the moment. A battle ensues on the far side. Long cross ice pass finds McIsaac. The trailer Herman backhands it towards goal. That would miss the net. He had Schreifels coming to the middle very briefly, but was unable to connect in that regard. Now it is Jack Agnew who will regroup it behind his own net, send a pass that's deflected before it got to Smolinski. Right, McIsaac up for Schreifels. A pass was just too far out of the reach of Herman, so the engineers will attempt to do it again in their own end. Pass was behind Rory Herman, who was skating the other way. That'll lead to an icing against the engineers and a faceoff on back in the defensive end with 11.16 to go. In the opening period, still no score. You can always tell that it's going to be a big game here at the Houston Fieldhouse, and there's one very key characteristic. In the far end zone, when you walk into the arena, normally the two end sections on either side are curtained off, but those have been opened up, exposing more seats as a shot from the point gets deflected wide. Expecting what we were told beforehand, near capacity crowds as Capital Region sports fans continue to stream in after their days of doing what have you. So a very exciting atmosphere here and expecting very much of the same when these two teams meet tomorrow in Schenectady. Puck on the far side, three black sweaters trying to knock, knock it away from the Dutchman, a backhand feed all the way ahead for Beaton who leads it in near side, whipped it through the crease. 
That one didn't hit the net. It went out of the or away from the outstretched pad of Connor Murphy. Beaton will deflect it the rest of the way. Mashey in to play that one. But it's whipped along there by Ferguson. Ferguson will get another chance to do it along the other side. Heavy pressure coming from Beaton as well as Mashey, but the Dutchman will take it through the center line before it's turned over and brought back the other way. Led ahead by Evans and a shot into the gut of Murphy. He'll make the save and hang on. 10.08 to go. Opening period here, Union and RPI. Still no score in a series that began on February 26th, 1904. Over 100 matchups all time, RPI 56, 42, and 12. Both teams have changed various division delineations. Union last becoming Division I in 1991. And so since that time, and with them both playing in the ECAC, it's been pretty good time to be rooting for both of these teams. Sent on goal from the point, Klee. A rebound was loose in front for the moment, but it wouldn't sit. It'll be sent back all the way in and go up and out of play. So with 9.42 to go in the opening period between RPI and Union in the blackout game, we have no score and we'll step aside. You're watching RPI Engineers Hockey on ESPN+. RPI Hockey is back. Contact the Houston Fieldhouse box office at 518-276-6262 or box office at rpi.edu to watch your engineers in action this season. For the love of the game, the team, or for two, Recovery Sports Grill. At Recovery Sports Grill, you'll always have courtside seats to exciting live sports coverage. And for outstanding loyalty perks, join our Hall of Fame, Recovery Sports Grill. Serving up smiles every season. 9.42 to go, first period here in Troy. No score between the engineers of RPI and the Dutchman of Union College faceoff just in front of the engineers' bench, and Dave Smith will send out a fresh line. Shots in this one even at two apiece. It's been a lot of neutral zone play, forechecking, backchecking, the heavier side of the game between these two teams. I've only seen one real scrum of note, but again, it's still early, and... Fans continue to stream in here at the Houston Fieldhouse. Excited to see both teams in action. Four check from Union's able to cause a turnover. Shot from the point off the end boards. Whipped on goal and a save. That one coming from Nate Hanley, who's had a couple of good chances. Sent along the boards, but not out. Kept in by Young. Klee will give chase. She, she, uh, Klee rather goes against Hanley into the corner. RPI will take it back the other way into their offensive end. Here's Walsh, sends low. Lee finds a trailer. It was Hallbauer, but he felt the pressure coming from Hanley. Young will go back and retrieve, flanked by Heideman. He'll go across the D zone for Snell, out to the neutral zone where Lori Surdy will regroup it. Hallbauer will gain the center line. Over the logo he goes, just in front of Beaton, though he gets the shot away. It's still loose in front, but a quick whistle before anybody on either side was able to find it. The, sh the pass rather looked like it was just out of the reach of John Beaton, but he used every inch of his frame to get that loose puck and whip it on net. Nearly beating Murphy, but he's able to make the stop and get a face off. Beaton and Ferris in on the draw to the right of Murphy. Puck controlled down low by Gagneau. He absorbs the hit, lose the puck in the process. Ferguson sends to the line, but not out. Good move there by Hallbauer to get a defender a little uncomfortable. He scores! <laughs> Kyle Hallbauer, the captain, gets 
Gets the engineers on the board first in. What a beauty. It started with a great individual move at the line to get a defender nearly all the way off his skates. And then when you step in, why not shoot it? He did. And he beats Connor Murphy clean to give the engineers a 1-0 lead. Goodness gracious, first goal of the season for Kyle Hallbauer, the captain and grad defender out of Howell, New Jersey. So the engineers take a 1-0 lead and the crowd on their feet. We'll look to add to it here as Smolinski's clearing attempt got deflected up and out of play. So a face-off will be in the neutral zone just outside of the engineers' defensive zone. Our penalty goal was scored by number 28, Kyle Hallbauer. Hallbauer's two points were both assists. Both coming against Mercyhurst back on the 8th of October. He's played a decent amount of the team's heavier defensive minutes. He and Laurie Serti often getting the tougher of the defensive assignments with other younger defenders getting more of the offensive zone time. But hey, when you get a chance, you take advantage, and that's what he did. And now it's led ahead by Mazzotti looking for a trailer. He's got a man coming. Smolinski to the backhand. It's deflected up and over the crossbar. Sent out to center. That's where Robertson will send it the rest of the way around the end glass. Stepping in there is Watkins to try to keep the offense alive. To the point here is Mel. He'll bail on it and send it to the near corner. Union continues their pressure, but it's turned over at the line. Led ahead by Evans. He'll chip up and above and continue his chase as the rest of his line goes for a change. Turned over at center. Why not one more time for Hallbauer? Didn't quite have the lane he was looking for, so he sends off the end boards, allowing Union to get it to the center line. That's where Josh Nixon finds it. Kicked ahead and in. Here's Ferris, a backhand feed, was looking back for Nixon. Couldn't connect, but Ferguson steps in. He walks to the top of the circles, now to the face-off circle in front, and a kick save by Watson. One of his better saves of the evening. It's shipped to the center line and all the way in by Hallbauer. Union will regroup after nearly equalizing. Brought in by Villegas, he will take it to the far corner and backhand it in for Hanley. A lot of contact there, Hanley and Smolinski were battling. That allows Lee to take it to the line and send it in. He'll go for a change. Ryan Mashey will be the one who starts the four check. But Union will regroup with Six minutes and change to go first period. Off of the boards in front of the Dutchman bench, it's chipped all the way up. That one will go out of play. So the faceoff back in the neutral zone. A number of, uh, number of souvenirs for fans in the stands early on here. So already another reason to cheer, no matter what side of the game you're on. Shots on goal in the early going, four apiece. The one getting by Connor Murphy from Kyle Hallbauer from the point. That's the only difference in score we have to this point. Here is Young on the near side in his own end to the center line. It's deflected in. Clea backhand feed finds Mashey, but we'll have a stoppage, and I can't believe it, but two more players have their cages caught. I mean, you see that once, maybe twice in a season, and we've seen that twice in 14 minutes and eight seconds. It, this time it was Strom, and the other one in on it there was Ethan Benz, the freshman out of Minnesota. I mean, I, I can't believe it. Two stoppages of play, two players who didn't want anything to do with each other in the beginning. And yet here we are. So the faceoff, although the breakout was getting started, will remain in the defensive zone because of where the incident happened. Mason Snell activates from the point. Transfer out of Penn State. 
He was able to get it below the goal, but the engineers will begin their regroup. And here is Hallbauer, sends it high off the glass out to center. Snell had knocked it down, but it's brought ahead by Walsh. He goes to his backhand. Walsh looking for a one-timer, and that one missed the net wide. Hallbauer keeps it in at the left point. Tried to send it on goal. It gets blocked. Rebounds to his partner, though. It's Lori Surdy. Loses a defender. On goal, deflected wide. Murphy came out of his crease to try to get that one. It's sent to the near side looking for a deflection from Lee, but didn't get it. Kept in at the line with a backhand by Surdy. Lee and Young battling. Now it's two aside. Puck is still loose. Found by Booty on the far side boards. Booty to the point. Klee shoots, kick, save, rebound. Oh, and a through the legs move. Heidemann was going for it all on that rebound, but Murphy was equal to both tasks. That would have been quite the way for the engineers to get their second goal after an already nice move on defense. Cutting in front of the goal is Mazzotti. He tried to get the shot away. Good coverage there on defense. Bit of reactive coverage by Union, but they still knock the puck away, so no harm and no foul. Pass goes ahead of Schreifels, allowing Petrullo to regroup in his own end. Sent the rest of the way by Benz. Watson will stop it with under five minutes to go first period. A 1-0 lead for the Engineers. Petrullo takes a hit but sends in deep. Fighting for it is Shearer. To a side, they'll try to gain possession on either side behind Watson's net. Benz had it for the moment, swooping in and taking possession there was... Tupker, here is Tupker once more. Tried to A-frame and get to the net, but Str uh, Strom kept him away. To the point, here is Petrullo. Going cross point, on goal from Prokop. That one missed the net. Whipped on goal in front. Watson will come out and find a rebound. Still loose on the far side. Neither side able to find it. Evans eventually gets it to the line, and it skips over the stick of Prokop. And the rest of the way, this one will go for icing on the clearing attempt from Evans. But the engineers will take a breath and take the result they get, which is a defensive zone faceoff, and still a 1-0 lead. Good forechecking from the Dutchman of Union, creating arguably their best chance. Josh Howji will send out the top line of Robertson, Theodore, and Watkins. Below the goal, here is Theodore. He hits the brakes and goes to the corner. Looked to center. Couldn't connect with Robertson, who had his stick tied up. Sent off the glass and into the defensive end. That's where Cullen Ferguson will find it. Good quick move to open up some room for him. He's at the center line, and he'll send it in deep. Sent off the glass, a deflection goes in favor of the Dutchman. Mel will send it into the near corner, but it's turned over and led back ahead by McIsaac. Here is Mashey, sends a backhand on goal. Murphy will grab that one. There is no rebound, and there are just under three minutes to go in period one, a one-nothing lead. On the goal from the captain, Kyle Hallbauer from the defensive line. RPI coming off of, as we mentioned a bit earlier on, their game against the National Team Development Program, a 7-4 loss. They got goals from Brendan Booty, Jack Agnew, and two from T.J. Walsh, who has been outstanding of late. Below the goal, here is Agnew on goal, knocked away by Murphy. He got a blocker on that one. Remarkably so, given how much traffic there was. Beaten on goal, he missed the net wide. Kept in at the line there by Smolinski. He hits the brakes on the near side boards. Beaten, feeling the pressure, just had to kind of spray a backhand off of those far boards. That'll allow Union to get it out to the line, but it's knocked away in a good defensive effort there by Smolinski. Here's Beaten, his shot blocked. Now Mashi in the near corner. To the point, it's Laurie Surdy. Surdy at the line will just have to give it away. Nixon will take it the other way, but it's an offsides. A delayed offsides was called or was signified at the beginning, but RPI was still offside. So the faceoff will come back all the way in the defensive end. With just over two minutes to go in the first period.
T.J. Walsh goals in two straight regulation games, regular season games, that is, and then including the goals against the national team, that's three. To the point kept in by Prokop will send it to the near corner. Fighting for possession, and the engineers have it for the moment. Surdy feels the footsteps coming. He sends it ahead for Walsh. Here is the trailer, Hallbauer, to the outside. Trying to whip it on goal there was Heidemann, a save made by Murphy. He'll spin away from danger, and his save leads to a couple of shoves given on both sides after the engineers crashed the net hard. Nothing's gotten too far out of hand, but we've seen two or three different times where some pushing and shoving has come our way after the whistle. Remarkably so, the only game of the weekend for either team here at the Houston Fieldhouse, the Union women's program up in North Country to begin their season. We'll give you an update on how that's going coming up later on in this one. But first, we have a face-off to the left of Connor Murphy with a minute and 39 seconds to go here in period one. Mazzotti and Benz in on the draw. Benz wins it cleanly. That is off the end boards for Petrullo. Deflected the rest of the way. Smolinski ran into Shearer there, but it was deflected in front of the center line, so no icing. Pass was directed towards Smolinski, not quite with the speed that a lot of fans would have wanted to see. But the Engineers do still get it all the way in deep. A backhand from Petrullo towards Benz will start the breakout for the Dutchman. On the near side here is Tupker, sends it through the legs of defender Agnew and on net, Watson makes the save. Sent high off of the glass and out to center, a backhand from Mazzotti in front was trying to get to Evans. He wasn't able to connect. Before it got to Chris Theodore though, Smolinski stepped up and sent a knuckling puck in deep. Pass deflected in by Theodore, who will give chase. Plea will reverse for Strom, the two defenders just on the ice after a line change. Klee off the near side boards, just ahead of Beaton. And not enough to get it on the Mashey stick as a hit laid there on Theodore, who was trying to take it in. Off of the end boards and all the way down, no deflection there by Jake Gagneau. So that'll lead to an icing and an offensive zone draw for Josh Hauge's group with under 30 seconds to go. Hauge assisted by Lenny Childs in his first season, but the more intriguing one, John Ronan, who served as the interim head coach with this program last season for about half the year, including in the Mayor's Cup, remained on staff here with new coach Hauge coming in, a shot from the point, blockered away by Watson. I'm sure it's definitely good to have that kind of experience on the staff if you ask Josh Howji that for sure. Here is Mashi, sends low for Gagneau. One-on-one -on -one they battle in the near corner, flipped high up in the air, Strom una unable to keep the line. Five seconds to go, Strom off the near side boards, was trying to find Gagneau who will go for a change, and we will head to our break after 20 minutes of play here at the Houston Fieldhouse. A great crowd on hand of excited Capital Region hockey fans so the homestanding engineers of RPI go up one to nothing after the first 20 minutes of play. The goal coming from Kyle Hallbauer, his first of the season and third point. Shots on goal after 20 minutes of play, nine to seven in favor of the engineers. Connor Murphy made eight saves on nine shots and Jack Watson saved all seven shots he faced. Well, we'll step aside after 20 minutes of play here at the Houston Fieldhouse. Again, the score, the engineers won and the Dutchman nothing. You're watching RPI Engineers Hockey on ESPN+. We are boundary pushing change agents. We do what it takes to make things happen together. It's our collaborative spirit that sparks creativity and pushes us to think beyond ourselves. We're scrappy and unabashedly enthusiastic about our passions and projects. We are hardwired for the havoc of change. We know it isn't easy, that theories can fail and world changing can feel futile. But that's the calm before the brilliant storm. The breath you take before you break through. Small change comes from asking why. 
changing the world comes from asking, why not? That's the question we ask everyone. From freshmen to faculty, it's the question that fuels us to find the next new. The question we ask you, why not change the world? For the love of the game, the team, or for two, Recovery Sports Grill. At Recovery Sports Grill, you'll always have courtside seats to exciting live sports coverage. And for outstanding loyalty perks, join our Hall of Fame, Recovery Sports Grill. Serving up smiles every season. It's the most historic conference in college hockey. It's a battle night in and night out. ECAC Hockey, an iconic conference home to 12 of the most prestigious universities and programs in the world and showcasing the best student athletes in the sport. Top-notch facilities and arenas, incomparable traditions, passionate fans, alumni who go on to become elite professionals, leaders, and champions. ECAC Hockey, there's no experience like it. Hi, I'm Andy James at Rensselaer Honda, and this is my buddy Bo. Looking to sell your car or truck? We want to buy it. Are you looking for a great used car? We have a huge selection. That's why Rensselaer Honda has been your Honda dealer for 44 years.
second period of play about to begin from the Houston Fieldhouse here on the campus of RPI. Thanks for watching RPI Engineers Hockey here on ESPN Plus. The score after 20 minutes of play, the Engineers leading the Dutchman of Union College by a score of one to nothing. I'm Dan Ball, thanks so much for watching here on this Friday evening. The coach Dan Fritton unable to be with us tonight. We apologize for the technical difficulties and we hope to possibly get it back on the microphone sometime soon. But in the meantime, we have hockey in front of us here on the screen as the Engineers were led with one goal and one goal only, but it was an important one. It broke the ice here and blackout night at the Houston Fieldhouse. Kyle Hallbauer scoring his first goal of the season unassisted at the 11:29 mark of the opening period. That was the scoring through 20 minutes of play. Shots on goal in period one were nine to seven in favor of the engineers over the Dutchman. Jack Watson made saves on all seven shots he faced. And Connor Murphy made eight saves on nine shots. So we're ready to go for the second period of play here at the Houston Fieldhouse in what we now know officially is a sold out Houston Fieldhouse. 4,700 fans strong here in the doors of the iconic Capital Region Arena. A great night indeed given what both programs have been through with COVID-19. Fans not being allowed in the stands up until this season. A great night indeed to open up ECAC hockey play for both groups. Puck is down at center. The Engineers gain possession. Here's gone. Yo off the draw shot and a blocker save by Murphy. Now near side corner. They will battle. Stolen away by the Engineers for the moment, but it's led back ahead over the center line by Snell. To the line knocked away by Surdy. Surdy and Hallbauer paired back together with the same line that began this game. Beaten Gagno and Mashi Ryan Mashi, assistant captain, back in the lineup. If you're just joining us after missing a handful of games with an injury, Jack Brackett, the player that came out on the other side, beaten sends to the line, kept in a play that kind of handcuffed the defender Strom. Let ahead by Bram Shearer, who's able to get around Mason Klee. He has the puck below the goal, sends on goal, and he whipped it through the crease and wide. Picked up by Colin Ferguson, who will carry behind the net. He hits the brakes, trying to elude John Evans. Backhand feet in front. Nobody able to connect on the other side of that pass. At the line, Villegas will send it the rest of the way in. Sent back to the point, pass was intended for Ferguson, but it was turned over. That's where Cal Mel will find it. The first year out of Alpharetta, Georgia, and it's whipped in on goal. Watson makes the kick save, and he will hang on. A minute 20 gone by, and already both teams picking up where they left off in terms of the physicality. We saw two or three scrums in front of both nets in the opening 20 minutes. And we see one here after the shot from the far side. Watson was able to cover that one up. Faceoff will be to the left of Watson. This Union team, their two wins this year against RIT back in the season opener on October 1st and against Bentley on the 13th of October. Currently 0-5-1 away from the friendly confines of the Achilles Center. They're looking to break that streak, but they trail by one. They'll drop it again to the left of Watson. The Engineers are looking to pick up where they left off at the beginning of the season with wins against Mercyhurst twice, LIU and Army for falling to Canisius and then the U.S. National Team Development Program. Still 4-1 and one to begin the year. Taken to center, that's where Watkins finds it. Liam Robertson will send a soft pass ahead for Theodore, who tried to whip it in front, but Smolinski was there to knock it away. Sent along for Agnew, who gains the center line, a backhand feed for Heideman, back for Agnew, looking in front. He was trying to find TJ Walsh, but the pass was knocked away. Going back to grab it is Heideman. Now it's Agnew on goal from the near side. Knocked away by Murphy. It's up and out of play. So the faceoff will be to the left of the netminder who was, though a native of Hudson Falls, New York, a transfer from Northeastern. He played his freshman year there, the 2020-21 campaign. Played with Northeastern, 9-9-3 record, 2-7-2 goals against average, 9-10 save percentage. Last year, he was named Union's most valuable player. 
was one of the real consistent players in a season of ups and downs for the Dutchman. He was outstanding. Hallbauer will pick that one off in front of his own defensive blue line, sent the rest of the way by the Dutchman, who will start their forecheck. Murphy played in both games against UMass, gave up the combined 14 goals, made 63 total saves. Young on the near side tried to send it in deep, but it was deflected up and out of place, so the faceoff will come back in the neutral zone. We're just about two and a half minutes gone by. In the second period, a game in which the Engineers lead by a score of one to nothing. Josh Howgey, the first year head coach of the Union College Dutchman, the seventh coach in the Division I era of this Union College team, spent seven years on staff with fellow AC hockey team Clarkson, including three as an associate head coach with Casey Jones. So he knows not only the ECAC, but hockey in upstate New York quite well, does Josh Howgey. Now he's leading the Dutchman. Whipped along the end boards. That's where McIsaac will find it. Bunted down low. Herman avoids the oncoming top curve, but it's picked up by Bram Shearer on the near side. Shearer pops it high up in the air, forcing RPI to regroup. That's where Dylan Davies will get it started. Davies to Klee and ahead. It's deflected in by Herman, negating any icing. Popped along the end boards there by Young. Union will get it out to the center line. Led ahead by Shearer. He's in on the far side. Shearer looks to center a pass in front. He took the hit in order to do so, and the pass wouldn't connect with Carter Corpy, who was on the other side of that two-on-two. Here is McIsaac. Pass gets knocked down there ahead of Herman. Engineers are in the midst of a change. Lori Surdy will slow things down and hit the brakes. Surdy's pass is picked off. Nixon, fresh off the bench, will go down and take it. He dropped a hit in order to get a little bit more room for himself. The speedy Nixon to the point. Prokop on goal, knocked away by Watson. Into the near corner, that's where Surdy will find it. Rather, it's Mazzotti, but he turned it over. Near side here is Nixon protecting the puck. He tried to get it toward the front of the net. Lori Surdy knocked it away to the point. Here is Prokop, he'll send to the near corner. Sent along once more, Nate Hanley. He's knocked off the puck. A pass in front was just behind Nixon. A bit of a defensive breakdown, but it leads to a two-on-one for the Engineers. Led ahead by Mazzotti with Evans. A saucer pass. Knocked away. Didn't quite get as much steam on it, but it's turned over. Here is Evans, and he scores! The two-on-one went by the wayside, but a turnover by the Dutchman leads to John Evans putting it past Murphy. It's 2-0 RPI. John Evans' second goal of the season. A turnover forced there by Mazzotti, allowing Evans to walk in alone. And he beat Murphy over the glove side for the second goal of the game for RPI. Time of the goal, four minutes and 23 seconds. It'll be Evans from Mazzotti. The insurance marker here early in the second period for RPI. On what was a broken play, but the stick to there from Mazzotti. This one set the length. That one will be icing. The faceoff will come back into the defensive end. The two-on-one, Mazzotti kind of got caught between. He wanted to sauce a pass through the defender over to Evans, who was on his offhand and ready for a one-timer, but didn't quite get enough steam on it. He, I think he kind of got caught between, I want to pass this and I want to shoot this. But the length of the six-foot-six Mazzotti was able to cause a turnover, and he just kind of caught the defender enough to let Evans swoop in and take the puck, and now it's 2-0. Here is Walsh, a nice move, shot on goal from Heidemann from the far side, turned away. From the point, Strom's shot gets blocked. Strom has to head back, he sends a backhand pass that's picked off by Mel. Here is Cal Mel, makes a toe drag to the backhand, and a save by Watson. Knocked away on that far side post. A fight ensues on the far side boards. Both teams looking for possession. The Engineers are able to pull it away. 
RPI, if you're just joining us, it's the annual blackout game, which was started back in 2003. And for each of those RPI games, the engineers don special black jerseys, which you can see on your screen, black with the red trim. And the names on the back of the jerseys are the names from the 1985 National Championship team. Brendan Booty is credited with the secondary assist seconds. on the goal RPI from Evans. Goal by 14, Evans second of the season. For the point, set on goal, the point that goes into the near corner, never got on net. Good friend Ken Schott from the Daily Gazette remarking, you can't have two assists on that play, and you can't. There were only two players in the offensive zone. Only two players who touch the puck. So Booty will get the point for the moment, but we we think that will stand. A turnover at the blue line. It was in front of Gagneau for the moment, but Hallbauer will end up with possession. Pass ahead, a shot over the top of the net. Near side, Mashi was the one who whipped it on goal. Big hit laid there by Shearer on Smolinski. That allows Union to take it back the other way. Here is Benz at the line. Benz on his backhand. Has the puck knocked away. Hallbauer took the worst of that one, or Mashey rather took the worst of that one. Knocked into the far corner there by McIsaac. Puck on the near side, sent to the point. Kept in for the moment there by Strom, but unable to keep it in the long term. Agnew will whip it off the boards. A pass in front that he was looking for Schreifels there. Henri Schreifels to the point. Shot by Smolinski, blocked wide. Up in the air and into the far corner. That's where it's picked up by McIsaac to the point. Agnew shoots, blocked. Now it's Smolinski on the far point. On goal, deflected, it goes through the crease and wide. McIsaac hits the brakes, sent off the boards, looking for Herman who absorbs a couple of hits. He gets the puck below the goal, but that's where it stops. All the way back to the point here is Smolinski. Puck kept in at the line, but the turnover forced. A good play there at the line by Nate Hanley, but RPI is able to take it back. They'll send it in deep and get a change. Near side, Smezru turns it over. Evans again, and he rang it off the post. The official was right on the goal line, and now a penalty coming up. It's going to be against RPI, so fortunes turn in a moment. The official, Tom Steinel, was right on that goal line. So he had as good of a view as anyone on that shot. Dave Smith is pointing up to the scoreboard and saying, hey, are you sure about that? Hallbauer getting as much information as he can. Meanwhile, a penalty has been called against the engineers, which is also what we're figuring out. Needless to say, nobody in the black jerseys are happy with the call, but it will be a penalty against RPI on the ensuing play. And ironically enough, it's the goal scorer and near second goal scorer, John Evans, who will sit for two. First power play of either team's night. Announcement four of 33 on their man advantage to this point. A 12.1 success rate to this point in the season. Knocked to the line and sent all the way around to the near side for Mel. Freshman defender out on the power play. A wraparound attempt. Couldn't get it all the way in front. That was Watkins who was trying to get it on goal. To the point here is Prokop. Prokop once more. Plays catch with Watkins. Looking for a one-time feed. He was looking for that bumper pass, but it would not connect. Prokop has it once more, walking the line. For the near side, it's Mel. He whiffed on a pass. Mel will take it below the goal. Looking to backhand a feed out in front. There was Corpy. That one wouldn't go. Still loose in front of Watson's net. Whipped along the boards by Klee. Kept in by Prokop at the point. Here is Prokop. Now for Watkins, Prokop at the top, looking for Mel, didn't take the shot. Settles the puck down on the near side. Watkins once more, now Prokop at the top, right over the ECAC hockey logo at center. A pass was in the skates of Smezrud. Klee is able to make the hit and clear the puck over the line. 
The engineers will go for full sale changes, as will Union. A pass goes past anybody wearing a white sweater and will be in icing against the Dutchman. So not necessarily the pass, the breakout pass, and the quick advancing pass that Union was looking for. The engineers will get a breather in an offensive zone faceoff. 42 seconds remaining and the penalty against John Evans. Evans was called for tripping. So that's the penalty there. Time of the penalty, 7.58. The goal, the original goal that he scored, will eventually be assisted, we think, by Mazzotti. It's going to be some combination of Sutter Mazzotti, Brendan Booty, or neither. Booty wasn't in the offensive end, so I don't think it will end up uh, with him, but we'll keep you posted as the updates are passed along. Backhanded high and all the way down there by Hallbauer. Nice play by the captain on defense to clear the zone on the penalty kill and kill a good 10, 15 seconds off in the process. Here is Ferguson. Near side now it's Theodore. Gains the line on the near side all the way back to the point. Ferguson up top. Villegas near side, one timer. Didn't get a ton on it there, did Hanley. The penalty is over, Evans is out of the box. Union is 0 for 1 on their power play. The penalty kill for the Engineers this year, 12 of 14, 85.7%. I'll make that 13 of 15 after the successful kill. Surdy sent a pass through the middle. It was knocked down, so Evans will have to head back into his own end. John Evans, the freshman out of South Surrey, British Columbia, scored his first career goal on the 15th of October against Army. Now he has two, and that's going to be a huge key for RPI this year. Establishing the depth scoring and having a guy like Evans as a freshman get in on the scoring early on is going to be key for Dave Smith's group. That is for sure. Watson knocks it down behind his own cage. Big hit laid, causing a turnover. Shearer made a quick move. Puck is still loose on the near side. It was Agnew, the defenseman, that was down for a good eight or nine Mississippis battling with a couple of different white sweaters. Eventually, it's forced over the defensive blue line for the Engineers and into the offensive zone for them. Here is Shearer at the near side line. He sends it all the way back in deep. Ryan Mashey will go below the net to be the first to play the puck. John Beaton tried to bunt it through his legs for the oncoming Davies, but it's turned over. Sent to the point, Nate Kelly now for Young, blockered away by Watson into the near corner. Flipped high up in the air ahead, looking for Ryan Mashey, but a good play with the stick there by Young to knock that puck out of midair in order to stop whatever was oncoming for RPI. A long bouncing pass from behind the goal line there from Agnew did not connect with anyone. That will go for icing against RPI, so the faceoff will come back into their own end. Eight minutes, 10 seconds remaining here in period two. Just past the halfway point we are in a 2-0 game favoring the home team. In front of a packed and now sold out if you're just joining us crowd here at the Houston Fieldhouse. Nixon is rubbed off there by Davies. Promotion going on here at the Houston Fieldhouse, too. Every now and again, people will come by and hand out some T-shirts as that shot is deflected up and out of play. That one nearly got up into the press box. The stray black T-shirt being thrown to the crowd here in front of us. So we'll step aside with 7.54 to go, second period. 2-0 RPI over Union. You're watching RPI Engineers Hockey on ESPN+. Plus. It's the most historic conference in college hockey. It's a battle, night in and night out. ECAC Hockey, an iconic conference home to 12 of the most prestigious universities and programs in the world, and showcasing the best student athletes in the sport. Top-notch facilities and arenas, incomparable traditions, passionate fans, alumni who go on to become elite professionals, leaders, and champions. ECAC Hockey, there's no experience like it. Hi, I'm Andy James at Rental Honda, and this is my buddy Bo. Looking to sell your car or truck? We want to buy it. Are you looking for a great used car? We have a huge selection. That's why Rental Honda has been your Honda dealer for 44 years. <laughs> it's 
7.54 to go, second period here in Troy. 2-0 lead for the engineers of RPI over the Union College Dutchman here on ESPN+. Plus. I'm Dan Ball, thanks so much for joining us here on this Friday evening in the Capital Region. One other ECAC hockey game going on. Dartmouth leading Harvard 2-0. The road team, the Dartmouth Big Green leading Harvard. 2-0 midway through the second period in that one. A couple other games going on out of conference. Clarkson tied at Lake Superior State 1-1. Colgate trailing Vermont 1-0 on the road as well. St. Lawrence trailing Michigan Tech 3-0. Cornell tied with Minnesota Duluth. That game just about to get underway, so no kidding, Dan. They are tied if they haven't yet started. To the point, Nixon on goal, deflected, never got all the way to Watson, who's taken down. Two defenders for RPI, not overly happy about that one, and now it's two on two. They'll add, send some shoving at one another. Owen Ferris was the one who was creating the chaos originally. He's taken probably eight or nine cross checks to various spots. Josh Nixon just took one as well. Trying to see if there's gonna be any penalties that come out of this. It looks like the engineers might be going down a player after all is said and done. A lot of pointing in you, no you, yes you going on here as we figure out the manpower moving forward. Paul Bauer's having a conversation with the official in this one. Trying to plead his case and actually, I stand corrected, the engineers will benefit from all that. Owen Ferris, who was the one who was causing the havoc, will be the one that ends up going to the box. Time of the penalty there, 12 minutes and 27 seconds. It's a roughing call against Owen Ferris for his role in front of Jack Watson's net. But now we've been evened up. One will sit, the other will sit as well. Rory Herman, the one who will sit for the engineers. Also a rough. So when all is said and done, we'll skate four on four for the next two minutes. Coincidental Miners have Herman and Ferris sitting for two. Our grouping there is Prokop near his own end. Pass to the middle, finds Watkins. Brought in by Robertson, but it's turned over. Smolinski was the one who knocked it away. Lee's pass gets blocked. Smolinski will regroup once more. Here is Jacob Lee. Lee went through a time through his first four games where he was leading the nation in points. Turnover forced here by Mashey. Here's Ryan Mashey. He draws a penalty. He got held up. The call will be hooking, so RPI will go on a four-on-three power play for the next minute and 29 seconds, barring any other changes. Liam Robertson will be the one that will sit for two for hooking. So after all of the chaos in the back and forth, the engineers will go to the power play. They are six of 21 so far this season, 28.6%. The kill for the Dutchman, 21 of 31. But again, you have to take into account what happened against UMass last weekend. They were 17 of 20, 85% before going four of 11 on the penalty kill against the Massachusetts Minutemen for the point. Stepping in, it's Mashey. His shot deflects up and out of play. Faceoff will stay in the offensive end. Three power play goals against in game one, four in game two. Second of which, four power play goals came in five opportunities. So it wasn't the greatest weekend shorthanded for the Dutchman. But again, earlier on in the season, they were fantastic. Mashey for Surdy, back up top. Beaten, Mashey. His pass gets blocked. Young sends it off the end boards and all the way down, so RPI will regroup in their own end as Union goes for full sail changes. 
Led ahead by Beaton. To the point, Lori Surdy steps one way, passes the other. Here is Beaton up top. Ryan Nashi circles away from danger. It's Beaton right above the faceoff circles. Mashi once more. He shoots, blockered away, rebound loose in front. It's deflected up and goes out of play. The stop made by Murphy, the rebound unavailable there for Beaton, and both teams will go for changes. 26 seconds remaining on the coincidental minors. Rory Herman sitting for two, Owen Ferris sitting for two. The ruling that the puck was cleared last off an engineer, so the faceoff will come back to the neutral zone. Jacob Lee wins the draw. Jack Agnew skates it right over the RPI logo here at center ice. Plays it to himself off the near boards. Walsh will reverse the offensive zone, but his pass hit a tough bounce off a stanchion behind the net. Smolinski trying to knock it free. Eventually he does. Here is Smolinski. Goes across. Looking for a centering pass was Walsh in front to Lee. The players from the coincidental minors are out of the box, so the engineers have 25 seconds of five on four power play time remaining. Near side, Gagneau. Now it's to the point for Smolinski. Puck would not sit for him. Near side, Wall steps in, looking back door for Gagneau. That one got deflected away. Smolinski keeps it in at the line, backhanded along by Gagneau. Here is Lee behind the net. Lee on the far side. Three seconds and two remaining on the penalty. Jammed in front by Gagneau. Puck is loose in front, and Murphy will cover up and get a whistle. And nearly saw what we just saw a few moments ago, and more penalties to talk about. After one of the engineers ended up in a headlock, but when all was said and done, Murphy was able to hang on and get a faceoff with exactly five minutes left in period two. His team trailing by two, and a faceoff to his right. Mazzotti, Booty, and Evans, the line for Dave Smith's group in the offensive end. Faceoff is won by Mazzotti and the Engineers. Stepping in here is Strom. Here is Strom shooting. It gets deflected up and goes out of play. Nick Strom not afraid to step in from the point and shoot the puck. He's done that. That's exactly how he got his first goal as a member of the Engineers' first collegiate goal to transfer from Western Michigan. Did not play a game with Western Michigan before shooting up for the Engineers. Scored against Mercyhurst back on October 8th. Here is Klee. His shot gets blocked off of the arm of Smezru. Young will gain the center line. Backhanded off the end boards, looking for the speedy. All the way, he tried to get it back to the point. Wouldn't go for him. That was Carter Corpy, apologies, who had the speed. He was so fast, he took my breath away. Ferguson off of the far side board. Sent on goal, deflected above the net. Good play by Mason Snell to keep that into the line. Here is Corpy centering a pass and a save by Watson. Nate Hanley, fresh off the bench, came right down the gut and got the shot on net. But Watson makes one of his best saves of the evening so far to keep the zero on the board for the visiting Dutchman. Your support ensures the current and future generations of student athletes. Shots on goal in this one, 16-11. to 11, So 11 of 11 to this point. Burnett Minder, Jack Watson. Hallbauer controls behind his own net after the faceoff win. Over center, Schreifels ran into an oncoming defender. That was Mel. So Ferguson will get a free lane to go back and regroup. Ferguson fights away from trouble. He's able to get it to the line. That's where Nixon has it. Lori Surdy is able to muscle that puck away. It's knocked to the line, but kept in. No, it's brought back over it. Nixon will one-hand it back for Ferguson. Union will regroup once more. 
Brought ahead and over center. Villegas was the one who was looking for the chance. The puck ends up in the corner near side. Now far side, that's where Lori Surdy finds it. Popped high up in the air and off the scoreboard she goes. So the faceoff will come back into the defensive end to the left of Jack Watson. At another scoreboard tally here at the Houston Fieldhouse. If you're keeping track at home. Both teams in this one were heavily impacted by both graduation and especially transfers. So two relatively young rosters on both sides. Here's Mashey trying to get a lane. He couldn't get around Petrullo to do so. Spolinski whips it back below the goal. Mashey back on his feet trying to get possession. Here is Gagneau below the goal. Gagneau avoids the stick of Petrullo. He takes it up top, sent on goal, missed the net wide. To the point here is Smolinski. He missed along the near side. Couple of chances not going here for the engineer. Stepping in is Agnew. He'll bunt it up into the air, allowing his team to try to forecheck. But that's where John Prokop finds it. Ahead for Benz. Shot on goal right into the chest of Jack Watson off of the RPI logo in the middle of his black jersey. He will hang on. John Prokop, the freshman defenseman out of Wisconsin, in the Des Moines Buccaneers program. Played there for the past two seasons, named the ECAC Hockey Rookie of the Week. Back on the 17th of October. Seven assists in eight games, six of which came against Union, Bentley, and RIT. All that happening in that same stretch between the 8th and the 15th of October, so. He's gotten the lion's share of ice time on, again, what is a very young blue line. Young in the near point, his shot is blocked away by Heideman. Brought to center, flipped high up in the air there by Corpy into the near corner. Mason Klee, the first one on it. Ahead of Hanley to the line and kept in by Young, so Klee will have to do it once more. Sent along the near side boards. It's out to center. Brought in on the far side. Centering feed. He was looking in front. Trying to find Lee was TJ Walsh. Pass just wouldn't connect. Walsh now on the far side. A quick pass there that was just out of the reach of the outstretched stick there of Jacob Lee. Lee goes one on one against Hanley behind the net. He's able to find it to the point. Now it is Evans, who's fresh off the bench, hadn't engaged in the offensive zone play yet, so it was kind of the player who was quarterbacking the offensive action, just for the moment, though. He got the pass from Lori Surdy. Now it's brought ahead by Smezrud. Whipped high up in the air. It was deflected. The pass was from Carter Corpy. It goes up and into the crowd. Just a few sections away from us, so... The faceoff will come back into the defensive end for the Engineers. A minute and 19 seconds to go here in period two. The t-shirt toss is brought back out. The Moe's final minute on the way, so fans will be rooting for tacos as much as they are goals coming up in just a few. Booty backhands it along. Behind the net, a big hit laid. The puck ends up rebounding in front. Murphy's able to hang on. Mazzotti laid the boom there on Ethan Benz behind the net. That was a big hit. It ended up sending the puck fluttering its way in front of the net, in front of the cage. But Murphy will hang on. So the faceoff to his left with a minute and three seconds left here in period two. Beaten Mashi Gagneau. The starting line in this one, the line elected by Dave Smith, they'll do the face-off once more. Beaten against Owen Ferris in his own end. Thought for a moment that it may not be beaten versus Ferris. So we have a stoppage of play here with a minute and three seconds left. It looked like something was happening 
Something was happening that was causing the referees here to hold up play. It looked like it might have been happening outside of the playing surface, but whatever it was, it has ended, and now Union will take it back the other way. Good defensive play there by Gagneau to knock that puck free. There's the cheer everybody was waiting for. Here is Beaton at the line. Beaton looked to go in front. Mason Clea jumped up as the fourth man in on the offense. To the point. On goal, missed the net to the near side. Villegas pops it high up in the air. Strom will be the first one there. Whips it off the near side board, but it was a turnover. Nixon's able to get it low of the goal. 20 seconds to go here in the second period. Fresh off the bench is Theodore. Hold off of the near side boards. Petrullo a shot, blockered away by Watson. Now 10 seconds left. To the line, beaten, trying to get it out to center. They do successfully. Prokop finds Petrullo. Here is Theodore over the line, chipped in on goal, but it missed the net. And that is how we will end the middle 20 minutes here at the Houston Fieldhouse. The score, the RPI engineers leading the Union College Dutchman by a score of two to nothing. The shots on goal after 40 minutes of play, 16 to 13. We've had a goal for the engineers of RPI in each period. We'll take a look at the goal in this second period. So it started in what looked like a broken play. Sutter Mazzotti and John Evans went on a two on one. Play was broken, looked like all was for naught, but Mazzotti was able to force the turnover and John Evans went in alone and beat Connor Murphy for his second goal of the season. And that made it two to nothing RPI, the all important insurance goal. That was the only scoring that we saw in the middle 20 minutes of play. Well, we'll step aside here on ESPN Plus and be back with the final period of regulation here between Capital Region rivals RPI and Union. The score after two periods, 2-0 RPI over Union. You're watching RPI Engineers Hockey on ESPN Plus. Let's get out of some, some back up here. He's got three chances to put the puck through that center hole in the board to win it. Release on the Honda Rick line. That's a bit wide. That one over the record. He's got a chance. It's the most historic conference in college hockey. It's a battle night in and night out. ECAC Hockey, an iconic conference home to 12 of the most prestigious universities and programs in the world, and showcasing the best student athletes in the sport. Top-notch facilities and arenas, incomparable traditions, passionate fans, alumni who go on to become elite professionals, leaders, and champions. ECAC Hockey, there's no experience like it. We are boundary pushing change agents. We do what it takes to make things happen together. It's our collaborative spirit that sparks creativity and pushes us to think beyond ourselves. We're scrappy and unabashedly enthusiastic about our passions and projects. We are hardwired for the havoc of change. We know it isn't easy, that theories can fail and world changing can feel futile. But that's the calm before the brilliant storm. The breath you take before you break through. Small change comes from asking why. Changing the world comes from asking, why not? That's the question we ask everyone. 
from freshmen to faculty. It's the question that fuels us to find the next new. The question we ask you, why not change the world? historic conference in college hockey. Hi, I'm Andy James at Rensselaer Honda, and this is my buddy Bo. Looking to sell your car or truck? We want to buy it. Are you looking for a great used car? We have a huge selection. That's why Rensselaer Honda has been your Honda dealer for 44 years. For the love of the game, the team, or for two, Recovery Sports Grill. At Recovery Sports Grill, you'll always have courtside seats to exciting live sports coverage. And for outstanding loyalty perks, join our Hall of Fame, Recovery Sports Grill. Serving up smiles every season.
are boundary pushing change agents. We do what it takes to make things happen together. It's our collaborative spirit that sparks creativity and pushes us to think beyond ourselves. We're scrappy and unabashedly enthusiastic about our passions and projects. We are hardwired for the havoc of change. We know it isn't easy, that theories can fail and world changing can feel futile. But that's the calm before the brilliant storm. The breath you take before you break through. Small change comes from asking why. Changing the world comes from asking why not. That's the question we ask everyone, from freshmen to faculty. It's the question that fuels us to find the next new. The question we ask you, why not change the world? It's the most historic conference in college hockey. It's a battle night in and night out. ECAC hockey, an iconic conference home to 12 of the most prestigious universities and programs in the world and showcasing the best student athletes in the sport. Top-notch facilities and arenas, incomparable traditions, passionate fans, alumni who go on to become elite professionals, leaders, and champions. ECAC Hockey, there's no experience like it.
Two periods down and one to go from the Houston Fieldhouse here on the campus of RPI. Welcome back to RPI Engineers Hockey here on ESPN Plus. And the score after two periods of play in the blackout game here at the Houston Fieldhouse. The Engineers leading the visiting Union College Dutchman by a score of 2 to nothing. Dan Ball with you here on ESPN Plus. Delighted to be with you here on this Friday night in the Capital Region. It's been an exciting two periods of hockey. Two goals, one in each period by the home standing Engineers. They got a goal from Kyle Hallbauer, 11 minutes and 29 seconds into the first period to make it one nothing. The goal last period coming from John Evans, the freshman scoring his second goal of the season at four minutes and 23 seconds. That is the scoring that we've seen as Jack Watson has made 13 saves on the 13 shots he's faced in net for the Engineers. Connor Murphy not to be outdone, 14 of 16. He's gonna need a big period for his visiting Dutchman in order to turn things around. The puck is down at center. The Engineers have possession deflected in by Gagneau, tried to center a pass for Beaton. Gagneau will instead go and do it himself, but it's backhanded off by Nick Petrullo, and Union will take it back the other way. Sent cross corner. Stepping in there was Topker. He was met by Laurie Serti. Now two on two, they battle, trying to find possession. A lot of hard work going on below the goal. Still nobody in possession. Now a third member of the Engineers has joined the fray. Hallbauer is kind of just watching over and looking for the puck to squirt loose. And he does. There you go. That's why you put yourself there. Hallbauer off the boards, out to center. He'll try it once more, though. He'll skate it and stop. Wheel his way back into his own end. Hallbauer at the top of the circle. Now for Rory Herman, who tries to reach around and send a pass to the middle towards Schreifels, but it didn't connect. Now here's Hanley over the line. He shoots, saved by Watson, rebound all the way to the point, whiffed upon, and taken back the other way through center by McIsaac. Here's McIsaac on goal, and a save by Murphy. He will hang on a minute and 16 seconds into period number three. One power play on either side in the second period. There were also coincidental roughing miners. Either side able to score their power play goal. Both of the goals for the engineers coming five on five. Puck is down, face off one by Union, sent off the end glass and all the way down. The race is won by Jack Agnew. So another icing will take the face off into the offensive end once more for RPI. Don't forget these teams will do battle once more tomorrow afternoon. So a home in home, but barely a bus ride if you want to call it that here in the capital region. Union hosting RPI tomorrow evening. On goal, off the faceoff win by the Engineers. That one's turned aside by Murphy. The puck was still loose, but a quick whistle coming. Official lost sight of that puck. So the faceoff will happen again in the offensive end. Don't forget these two teams will play each other in the 10th annual Capital District Mayor's Cup. On January 28th, it's always a great day for hockey in the Capital Region. It's not a court, it's not a lacrosse field, it's an ice rink at the MVP Arena when they when these two teams play one another for the Marist Cup. Always a great time, sent from the far side point on goal. This time Watson will glove it down. Colin Ferguson taking the shot from the far point that Watson was able to glove down and hang on to. Neither team has been afraid to crash the net after shots that came from their defenders. So that's why we've seen some pushing, some shoving, some cross checks, you know, the college version of fighting in front of both nets throughout this night. And if you ask the 4,700 strong here at the Houston Fieldhouse, that's probably something they don't mind seeing all that much. Here is Chris Theodore in the far corner, had the puck knocked off of his stick. Mazzotti skates it through center, three on two with a trailer for Union. Looking for a centering pass, a backhand from Mazzotti got deflected and ends up rolling its way in on Murphy, who will cover up. 
Now a couple of shoves being sent Sutter Mazzotti's way after Brendan Booty was in and out of the fray. Mason Snell and Nick Young, both of whom were on defense, are saying hello and how are you to the freshman Mazzotti. Who will be skated out of harm's way by the linesman. Faceoff will be to the left of Murphy. Just over two minutes gone by. Third period, 2-0 RPI. Mazzotti against Robertson on the draw. It's knocked to center there by Theodore. Here comes Watkins. Two on two, led ahead by Watkins to the near corner. The puck left his stick. Bunted below the net. That's where Theodore finds it. It's knocked away on a defensive play there by Nick Strom. Regained and sent back to the point. Chipped in deep there by Snell. Theodore on it once more. Tried to reverse it in front. Klee was able to block that one. Over the center line comes John Evans. He'll spray it off the near side boards and go for a change. Union will change part of their forward group as they begin their breakout. Here is Snell at the line. Theodore brings it in around Hallbauer into the corner. Theodore hits the brakes. Back up top for Hanley. Off the end boards and in deep. Carter Corpy in the near corner. Got it loose for Hanley. One timer from the far side. Watson made the save. To the point, Smezrud keeps it in. His shot missed the near post wide. Petrullo couldn't keep the line. Mashey giving chase through the neutral zone. Union will regroup. Pass ahead for Hanley to the backhand. Knocked away by Watson to the far boards. That's where John Beaton finds it. Beaton sends along for Gagneau, who tried to spring Mashey through the neutral zone, but the puck didn't end up going over the blue line. So RPI will have to try again. Knocked out to center. Dylan Davies at the line will backhand it in on Murphy, who will cover up with Mashey in his face. Mashey takes a couple of shoves for the snow shower that was sent to the face of Connor Murphy. And once again, neither team afraid to go to the front of the net. And Ryan Mashey, the assistant captain, trying to set the tone for his team as they look to defend their lead here in the final period of regulation. Lee will lean in against Ethan Benz for the draw to the left of Murphy. Puck ends up loose on the near side. Skated through center and in there by Ferguson. Turnover, shot on goal, that's blocked. Long pass ahead, here's Walsh on a breakaway. In comes TJ Walsh, and a save by Murphy, and he hangs on. The puck jumped up on TJ Walsh, just enough for him to Lose control of what he was trying to do, but he still got the shot off. And a big save by Murphy. You can see on the replay, the puck kind of got away from Walsh a little bit, but he still tried to go five hole. It allowed Murphy to kind of regain his position. He never bit though. You could never see him budge when he was following that puck. Walsh positioned himself in a spot right between the two defensemen for Union, and he was able to get a breakaway, backhanded off of the end glass behind a Murphy's net. Young gets it free, Snell off the near side glass, too far ahead for Nixon. Smolinski across for Hallbauer and in, Herman pivots, backhands it in deep. Here is Henri Schreifels to the point. Hallbauer sends it wide off of the end boards, an active bounce. Trifles once more, puck protects and lost the puck. A bit of an awkward play there. Somehow his stick ended up between his legs. It was just a whole thing. Didn't end up with the puck though and Union will regroup behind their own cage with just under five minutes gone by in period three. A backhand feed, now here's Nixon, looks back door. Oh, and a save by Watson. Taken to the line and in by Smolinski. Owen Ferris was on that back door on a nice pass from Josh Nixon. But Watson was able to get back and kick it out. A wonderful save there from the engineer's netminder. Now here's Brendan Booty over the center line. Booty carries into the corner. He's met by Ferguson. The two will battle right in front of the ECAC hockey logo on those end boards. Mazzotti pulls it free. 
Chris Theodore trying to knock it loose. Now it's Cal Mel for Watkins and ahead for Theodore with speed. Trying to get around Klee. Mason Klee lays the big hit on the far boards to the delight of the crowd here at the Houston Fieldhouse. It also allows the puck to escape into the neutral zone. Ferguson met by Mazzotti ahead for Theodore. His pass didn't connect with one, found the other. It's Robertson. No room to move, though, for Liam Robertson. The defensive effort for RPI has been largely very strong in their own end on the rush. This is the line that's going to beat you if you're RPI. This line that's led by Liam Robertson and Chris Theodore and Tyler Watkins. They haven't been able to generate much. Knocked behind the net, beaten in pursuit. Petrullo was able to knock it away. Along the near side, Hanley was unable to corral. He heard the footsteps of Lori Surdy as well, so he deflected it in deep. Long pass ahead from Beaton. Here is Gagneau, sends a space pass just out of the reach of the oncoming Ryan Maschi. A good defensive play there with the stick by Hanley to knock that puck away. He ends up with possession on the near side, does Hanley. Sends a pass through the middle. Whipped in deep by Corpy, who will go for a change. Watson ahead for Surdy, who knocks it through his legs for the speedy TJ Walsh. Here is Walsh on the far side. Through center, he was met with a poke check. The puck is knocked loose. Nearly turned over once more, but it's taken at the line by Shearer. He's met by three black sweaters, hit by a few of them at least. Big hit coming there on the near side by Surdy. Knocks the puck free into the near corner. Hallbauer all the way around. Hodeman takes the hit. Puck is near the defensive blue line for RPI, and now it's knocked to center. Hallbauer sprays it off the boards. Walsh will regroup once more. This time not as committed to the rush. He's at the end of a long shift. He is there to deflect the puck, was unable to do so. It ends up in on Murphy. And nearly with a chance for Jacob Lee, an active bounce off of the end boards. Led ahead by Shearer. Now here's Nixon on goal, kicked away by Watson. Whipped on goal by Ferris, it deflects up and goes out of play. So we'll have a stoppage with 12.21 remaining in period three, two nothing. RPI leading Union. Looking to hang on and pick up win number five of the season, but possibly more importantly, win number one in ECAC hockey play is, you see the replay of Mason Klee's hit on Chris Theodore. Certainly got the fans into it. They've been on their feet twice. Though I would argue possibly the biggest consistent cheer of the night came when a local Troy youth hockey team came on the ice. Ended up tying two to two, but I tell you what, if I was Dave Smith, I'm recruiting that group of 2010s, maybe? I don't know where we are at that point, but it was some very impressive hockey. That got the crowd on their feet. 4,700 strong here at Houston Fieldhouse watching this one as Davies gains the line. Avoids a big hit coming from Cal Mel. He led with the elbow as well, so that would have been interesting if it connected for sure. It did not. Bunted down, though. Nice play by Rory Herman to knock that clearing attempt down. Here comes Nixon. Through center. Leaves for a trailer. Now a feed in front. A shot on goal coming from Caden Villegas, who wasn't able to get a ton of speed behind that shot. Ends up an easy save handled by Jack Watson. It started out strong, but the oncoming back checkers for RPI were really able to close down anything that was available. The best chance so far in this third period, Jack Watson making the save on that backdoor chance for Owen Ferris. It's been Josh Nixon, the transfer from Lake Superior State, who's really been in on the offense in every major chance, especially here in this third period. Three points in eight games. So we'll watch out for his name as we continue here. He's been getting more and more chances here, at least from a playing time perspective. Here's Booty, tries to drop the shoulder, knocked away by Prokop. Kept in at the point, on goal, off the crossbar, up and above the net, and a whistle will stop play. A bang-bang play to say the least. Ended up, I believe, deflecting off the crossbar, so it all started with just a whack at a rolling puck that I believe cranked, or clanked off the top, top of the crossbar and then rested itself right 
above the net where a goalie will keep their water bottle. That is the top shelf if you're looking for the actual hockey nomenclature. Anyways, after the craziness that ensued, here's Mashey off the draw, saved by Murphy. He has it once more. Below the goal is Mashey. Switching places with Strom. Mashey, look for a pass down low. Kicked away in a nice play by Hanley. Hanley has it once more on a backhand pass from Smezrud. Too far ahead for Carter Corpy though, and RPI will regain possession right in front of their own bench. Led ahead by Mashey, he takes the hit from Young to get the puck in deep. Mason Snell sprays it off the end boards out to center, but would not sit for anybody wearing white. On goal from near the center line there from Strom, gloved down by Murphy, who will get it started for his own defense. Good play with the stick there by Nixon. He had a man coming, it was Hanley. Instead, Nixon goes one via couple. Tried to stick handle his way through the defense of the engineers. He did end up getting a shot on goal, but that's where Jack Watson said no at the end of everything. It seems like we're going to continue calling Nixon's name, the sophomore out of Mississauga, Ontario. Played in all 37 games last year for Lake Superior State. 20 points in 37 games, ended sixth on Lake Superior in points. Chose to make a change and come join Josh Hauge's group. Sent off the boards but kept in by Mel, who will activate from the point, but he turns it over. Led ahead by Hallbauer, so one defenseman tries, now another defenseman does the same. Jacob Lee hits the brakes, sends all the way across for Surdy on goal, deflected just wide by T.J. Walsh, who had parked himself in the slot. Got a chance at RPI's third goal as we tick just past 10 minutes here in period three. On goal, off the side of the goal, and then off the back glass. Hallbauer ahead. Two on three, and a pass goes through the crease and wide. Faking the shot there was Schreifels. He has it back on goal, knocked away with the stick there by Murphy. Probably would have gone off the side of the net anyways, but ended up giving it an old college try here in college hockey. Good defensive play there by Agnew, knocks the puck loose. Benz fights for it, opposite two defenders for RPI. Along the near side wall, a pass is bunted back, and now here comes Smolinski. His pass too far ahead of Schreifels, but Smolinski will keep it in at the point. Couple of deflections, and it ends in the near corner. McIsaac had it for the moment, but he lost possession, turns it over, and at the line, Union will choose to dump it the rest of the way. Staying on the forecheck, though, is Ben Tupker, another transfer out of Cornell. 26 games last year, seven total points. To the point, here is Snell. His shot missed the net wide. Theodore on goal in front. Whacking at it there was Robertson. He couldn't get it to sit for him. Snell looked in front, deflected, and it's in the back of the net. A bang, bang play in front. And Ben Tupker is able to deflect it over the shoulder of Jack Watson. And the Union College Dutchmen have cut the lead in half. It's 2-1. to one. This is a remarkable play of strength. There by Ben Tupker, who was tied up with Jack Agnew and somehow was able to get enough leverage on that puck to deflect it and use the speed of the pass that was coming in to get it right over Watson. Ben Tupker's second goal of the season. Scored against UConn back on October 8th. Have been held scoreless since that point. Face off one by the Engineers. Booty on goal, blocked away by Murphy. So now it's two to one, and the Dutchmen are just a goal away from tying things up. He was assisted by the point, Mason Snell. The scoreless streak, which had reached, well, it at least went over the 160 minute mark. Just inched its way over. Good friend Ken Schott telling me about that in between periods. Walking in there is Bleed, deflected wide. It was at 149.07 after the second period, then do the math. So that comes to a close. RPI will take it back the other way. The final total, 160 minutes and 35 seconds without a goal for 
Union until that point. Ken Schott, the Daily Gazette, if you don't read it, well, I can't help you. That is for sure. Near side, Gagneau sprays it off the boards. Led ahead by Mashi. He takes a hit and is taken down. Petrullo took him down and a leg check. Leg on leg and Mashi took the worst of it. So the engineers will go to the power play after giving up their first goal of the game and we'll tell you more about it when we return. 2-1 engineers over the Dutchman. You're watching RPI Engineers Hockey on ESPN+. It's the most historic conference in college hockey. It's a battle night in and night out. ECAC Hockey, an iconic conference home to 12 of the most prestigious universities and programs in the world, and showcasing the best student athletes in the sport. Top-notch facilities and arenas, incomparable traditions, passionate fans, alumni who go on to become elite professionals, leaders, and champions. ECAC Hockey, there's no experience like it. For the love of the game, the team, or for two, Recovery Sports Grill. At Recovery Sports Grill, you'll always have courtside seats to exciting live sports coverage. And for outstanding loyalty perks, join our Hall of Fame, Recovery Sports Grill. Serving up smiles every season. Seven twenty-eight to go, third period here in Troy. 2-1 lead for the engineers of RPI over the Union College Dutchman. Most recently, Union getting on the board at the 11:28 mark of the third period. Ben Tupker scoring from Mason Snell and Liam Robertson. That made it 2-1, but the engineers will go to the power play for the second time this evening. Agnew and Smolinski on the point. Agnew, a one-timer blocked in front. Picked up by Gagneau, who will settle it down. Here is Agnew switching places with Smolinski. Now it's Walsh. Walsh for Agnew once more, a centering feed and a shot from Lee. Turned aside by Murphy. Rebound on the near side. Now it's Smolinski at the top of the zone. Smolinski for Agnew, a one-timer that's blocked. Here's Walsh, a backhand. He was looking for either Lee or Gagneau. He found neither. Agnew near side on goal again. Save by Murphy with the glove. And he will hang on. And Jacob Lee was the one who was creating the havoc in front of Murphy's net. Wasn't able to deflect that one. And he was escorted out of the way by the jerseys in white. Looked like it was Nick Young predominantly who was saying, you know what, you really shouldn't be here. Wholesale changes on both sides. Beaton will lean in for the draw against Carter Corpy. And before we drop the puck, the engineers have just taken a bench miner. It's going to be Jacob Lee who's going to go to the box, I believe. So Lee will sit for two. That negates the power play. Likely be an unsportsmanlike. Time of the penalty, 13 minutes and 10 seconds. It's been quite the run for Jacob Lee, I must say. Game misconduct against Canisius in that game on Tuesday, the only away game this team has played to this point. Then a game misconduct in the exhibition against the U.S. national team, and now an unsportsmanlike on the bench. Shot on goal, save made. So it's a 10-minute misconduct. So he is off the ice at a very important time. So the power play still remains. So still 0 for 1. Second opportunity. Shot gets deflected up and above the net. So again, a 10-minute misconduct assessed to Jacob Lee, who will wait that one out in the box. 
Sent to the point. Here's Beaton. He shoots. Blockered away by Murphy. A real nice stop. A clear chance at the top of the circles there for John Beaton. Beaton has it once more on the near side. Goes back door one timer, and he missed the net. Picked up by Beaton, slowed down as it gets to Mashi on the point. Mashi and Laurie Surdy will switch places. Surdy on goal, deflected, save Murphy, rebound loose. Beaton had it for the moment. Booty's able to advance it along all the way to the point. Ten seconds to go on the penalty against Petrullo. Near side here is Beaton. Low of the goal, his pass wouldn't sit for Heidemann. Penalty comes to a close. We're back to five on five. The engineers will go for line changes as Heidemann walks the line, but is forced back out to center. Heidemann won the lottery in terms of the 1985 jerseys. He's wearing the Adam Oates number 12. Is looking to channel the 90 plus point performance of Adam Oates in that 1984-85 season down the stretch. Play is whistled offside. So 5.06 to go third period. 2-1 RPI over Union. So we're back to five on five in terms of the manpower. But the one big impact here is Jacob Lee is sitting for a 10 minute misconduct. So that'll take us through regulation and into an overtime if there is one. It is one. We're not lined up for one. But it was all it all came from Lee being in front of the net on the power play. And he didn't like the way that he was <clears throat> escorted out of the net front area and continued the conversation while on the bench. And that is what led to the official who was getting the earful to make the call. So he sits for two, and the engineers are put in a position where now they're down a, a key offensive player, or leader in points, and B, an important center in their depth chart. So you're now down to three centers, unless you have one of your wingers jump over. But you're down to 11 forwards no matter what. So that's where we're going to be, and that's where we're going to go, as now we're under five minutes to go in the third period. Watson sends it off the far side boards, knocked away from him. As has been the case in the previous two, Sutter Mazzotti taking a shift with the line of Heidemann and Walsh as that one is out of the reach of Evans. So everybody was changing at the time. And icing is called against RPI, so they'll head back into their own end. And the Dutchman will get an offensive zone draw. Owen Ferris will take the draw against Rory Herman, but not before we have a stoppage and a timeout that's called by RPI. So after the power play and then five on five time and the icing, the engineers will take a timeout and just kind of calm things down and get a bit of organization. There were a lot of players from a lot of different lines that were out on the ice when that icing was called. So Dave Smith settling the crew down. So we will hang on here for a timeout taken by the engineers of RPI. They lead by a score of two to one. The scoring in this game, Kyle Halbauer scoring his first goal of the season at the 11.29 mark of the first. That made it one nothing. John Evans scoring off of a turnover forced by Sutter Mazzotti at 4.23 of the second to make it 2-0. But then Ben Tupker got his team on the board at the 11.28 mark of period three, his second goal of the season on a pass from behind the net from Mason Snell, who had activated from the point. It is two to one, and that is where we stand. An update from the RPI women's program. They dropped their ECAC hockey opener by a score of three to nothing up in North Country to St. Lawrence. Amanda Rampato was in net, finished with 23 saves in the game. They will take on Clarkson tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. So a good luck to the RPI Engineers women's hockey program as they continue their ECAC hockey play. Speaking of ECAC hockey play, that's what we have here as Union is now in their offensive end looking to tie the game. Two on two, they scrap for possession of this puck. Walsh is able to knock it free. He has possession of the puck through center. Here is Walsh. Looks for the trailer. Goes for a feed in front. Mason Klee was the one who got the shot on net. He takes a couple of shoves and forearm shivers up near the 
cage, the black cage on his red helmet. He was the one who jumped up on the rush as the third man high. It was really a three on three. He had a union player that was marking him the entire time. But there are the pleasantries that were exchanged following the chance because Klee had a lot of speed and really not that much runway with which he could use to stop. So Connor Murphy, in part, broke his fall. Nobody ends up in the box on either side. We'll play five on five. Puck is down to the right of Murphy. It's controlled by Union, sprayed along the boards, turned over, a shot by Mashey, saved by Murphy. He will hang on. They'll do the face-off in the same location it was just a few moments prior. Union will make a change of their own. Dave Smith will get an idea of what's going on and a change to the defensive unit for RPI. The more offensive Agnew and Smolinski coming out on the defensive end. John Beaton, Liam Robertson to take the draw. It's won by Beaton, but controlled off the draw by Watkins. Now here's Theodore with speed. Was looking in the middle for Watkins. Theodore shoots, that one's blocked by Agnew. It goes up and out of play. Good speed in transition there for Union on their top line. Liam Robertson had quite the campaign last year, the junior out of Portis, Ontario. Two goals in eight games this year. But he had eight power play goals out of the 13 he scored last year. That was ranked eighth nationally, fourth for Union all time. Had five game-winning goals, two of which I believe were in overtime. That ranked third for Union all time. So he was a guy that Josh Howge was thrilled to have stick around. He's the top line center on this team, is Liam. Robertson. Beaton's able to knock it free. The puck is skittering its way through the defensive end for Union, but they're able to settle it down. Here's Tupker. He sends it to the near corner. Off of the end boards, Nate Hanley is able to negate the icing, sent back to the point for Prokop. Now it's Petrullo on goal into the chest of Watson. He will hang on, and two white sweaters were quick to encroach on the crease, so a couple, uh, a couple of other shoves being given on either side. Laurie Surdy was the one who was on his backside for a while. He got knocked down by the oncoming Tupker. Both teams will make their changes just over three minutes to go third period. RPI hanging on by a score of two to one. So we'll keep an eye on Connor Murphy and see where Josh Howge goes in terms of possibly pulling his netminder. I'll speak for the coach, Dan Friggen, and say that it's not necessarily about the time, it's about the feel of the game. And this has been a time in which Union has definitely taken the momentum back, but RPI looks to answer. Herman will gain the center line and back, backhand it in. Again, if you're just joining us, uh, the coach, Dan Friggen, was here with me. We were both decked out in our black suits for blackout, but unfortunately one of our microphones here in the booth was not cooperating, not not working the way that it's supposed to, you know, hearing us talk and such. So he'll be back with us next weekend as this is the only game here at the Houston Fieldhouse this weekend. We miss him dearly. But it's still the same amount of Dan for your money, so that's something to be proud of, I guess. Instead of two, you get one, you just get more of the one. Back to get it is Colin Ferguson. Two minutes and 15 seconds to go, third period, 2-1 RPI. Ferguson at the line will send it in back behind Watson's net. First one there to win the race is Ferris. He's in that near corner. A saucer pass there by Villegas was picked off by Hallbauer, but it's kept in at the line. No, it's not. Instead of in offsides, though, the call is a hand pass. Call coming from Mark McGinnis, who was right along that defensive blue line for RPI. So the faceoff will come back to the neutral zone. A minute and 53 seconds to go here in period three. Hanley and Beaton lean in for the draw. It's won by Hanley and Union. Led ahead by Mel on the near side. His dump in attempt went off of the helmet of Lori Surdy, who then rings it along the near side. Pass skitters out in front, but it's picked off by Hallbauer. Murphy started his 
descent to the bench, but when Hallbauer picked the pass off, he chose he chose against it. Now he goes to the bench. Six on five will play with Union looking to get the game tying goal. To the point it is Mel, near side. Hanley, Smezru, his shot gets blocked by Beaton. It rebounds up and goes out of play. So with a minute and 12 seconds to go in the third period, Union will make full sale changes. The grease board is out. And Union will ready themselves for what appears to be a timeout. Josh Hauji at the top right of the bench will signal for his timeout. It will be granted, and so Union will draw up their play in the offensive end here with a minute and 12 seconds. Remaining in period three, an RPI leading by a goal. Quick look at the out-of-town scoreboard while we have a break in the action. Just about four minutes to go in the third period out in Alston, Mass. Harvard doubling up Dartmouth by a score of four to two. Four unanswered goals, including one shorthanded by Harvard, Harvard in the game's final two periods. That's led them to a 4-2 lead. Clarkson leading Lake Superior State. That is three to one. Just about three minutes remaining in that one. Colgate appears set to drop a game at home to Vermont, two to one, as that one is nearing final. Just two seconds left on the clock, but that may be out of date now to this point. Michigan Tech all over St. Lawrence, six to nothing. The total is Michigan Tech is hosting that one. Cornell trailing Minnesota Duluth, one to nothing, midway through the second period. And that's what we have for you for ECAC hockey play. Back to the other ECAC game of the night, the game that will count towards the standings. It's the one you're watching right now. Six on five, Union will play. The puck is knocked to the line, but not out. Blocked down, chipped to the line, kept in once more by Prokop. Smezru tries to send across the offensive end. Mel pops it up in the air. It goes off the back glass, whacked away into the near corner. Mel reverses. Sent on goal by Watkins. That one gets blocked to the corner. Here's Watkins on the point. Quickly for Prokop. Watkins again. He widens out of it. Smezrud for Watkins. One-timer blocked in front, cleared to the line, and chipped out to center. Oh, boy, that one was taken right in the bread basket. On defense there by Herman. Strom rips it around the boards, kept in. Now into the near side corner. To the point, kept in by Prokop. Prokop shoots, it's blocked. The flex up and into the far corner. Whipped on goal, that one missed the net wide. 15 seconds to go. Watkins sends low with the goal. A backhand feed in front. It's cleared out to center. Kept in by Watkins. Knocked away by Mazzotti out to center. Prokop will try it once more with five seconds. Knocked low with the goal. A race for the puck. Loose in the corner and time will run out. And the engineers of RPI hang on. To win a battle of Capital Region rivals. And as you can see, the rivalry heating up at game's end. But it is the homestanding engineers of RPI who pick up the victory. They hang on to win by a score of two to one in a game that had a lot of back and forth action. It wasn't offensive in nature, it was defensive and it was a battle of two outstanding goaltenders. The final shots on goal total, 32 to 24 in favor of RPI. The one goal in the third period, it came for the Dutchman of Union College. That ended up cutting the lead in half. It was Ben Tupker who scored his second goal of the season at the 11.28 mark of period three. So a really nice play to uh, gain position in front of the net and put it in the back of the net. But that was as far as Union would go as RPI would hang on for the victory thanks to goals from Kyle Hallbauer in the first and John Evans in the second period. The Evans goal ends up being the game winner. For Jack Watson, he makes 23 saves on 24 shots to pick up win number five on the season. The tough luck loser there, Connor Murphy, 
He gives up two goals, makes 30 saves on 32 shots. Murphy falls to 2-4-1 and one on the season so far. Well, that's going to do it here from the Houston Fieldhouse on the campus of RPI in the city of Troy. Again, the final score here in the Battle of the Capital Region on blackout night. In front of a sellout crowd, the RPI engineers pick up a 2-1 victory over Union College. These two teams will battle once more tomorrow night out in Schenectady face-off at 7 o'clock as the engineers look to sweep the weekend and open up ECAC hockey play with a sweep and some points on the board when you need them most. Well, for my partner, the coach, Dan Fredgen, who we hope to hear from when we rejoin you here at the Houston Fieldhouse, Dan Ball saying thank you so much for listening. The final score for the final time, 2-1 RPI over Union. You've been watching RPI Engineers Hockey on ESPN+.